During the springtime, most cities or counties will have a day where you can bring stuff free of charge to a dump site, and if you hadn't figured it out, sometimes they'll drop off lawn equipment. This Murray mower would be one of those items, and the strange part is that on first impression, it looks to be in really good condition. There's no damage to it, and nothing on it would tell me that it's ready to be crushed and thrown into a recycle bin. After taking a closer look at it, you simply won't believe why this mower was sent to the scrap pile. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this Murray branded lawnmower, and the problem is that it was found at the city dump, and I don't know anything about it. But it's a safe bet that it won't start, and they threw it away because they didn't think it was repairable, but they couldn't have been more wrong about it. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. So one of my coworkers was able to save this mower from the crusher at the dump and thought more than likely I'd be able to do something with it. And for their efforts, I want to thank them for saving what in today's market is a mower that when new is worth more than $350. I don't know about you, but that's hard for me to understand why someone would want to crush it instead of repairing it, but then again, I have a hard time understanding what other people do. Now, as you can see, there's probably about $10 worth of gasoline in the tank, so even if this mower turns out to be scrap, I'll at least be able to use the gasoline in it, so I'm already ahead as far as making a profit. Also, considering the age of this mower, I might also have to inspect the valve lash on it because more than likely, it's probably never been done before and I want to make sure it's going to run well for the next few years. The strange part is that after checking the oil, you can see that the color is really good. That can only mean one thing, that someone was taking care of this mower and was trying to make sure it was going to stay running for a long time. Now, after checking the oil level, it turns out that it's full, so I have to wonder if the person who threw this mower away was a different person than the one who was taking care of it. Also, after seeing this piece of metal on the mower, I soon realized what might have happened to it. If you didn't recognize this part, I'll tell you what it is. This is the governor linkage for the throttle lever on the carb. Without it being in place, the engine would either not start or worse yet, over rev and blow up. Now more than likely the engine didn't start for them and that's probably the reason why they gave it away. But the bigger question is how in the world did this come off the carb in the first place? These simply do not fall off the carb so there's only one reason why it would be like this. After draining the fuel from the tank we can see that the gasoline wasn't that old at all. If I had to guess it might be a few months old but it's still quite usable. In fact I'll pour some of the gasoline back into the tank once we get done. I'm also going to drain the fuel from the bowl as well. This will allow me to inspect the fuel in the bowl for any water or debris. Luckily, there's plenty of room to swing this Allen wrench, but if this were a front-wheel drive model, there'd be a lot less room to do this. Once all the fuel is drained out of the tank, I'm going to remove the top cover, which is also the recoil assembly. This will give me the option to remove the fuel tank if we need to. Normally, I wouldn't do this, but it also makes filming a little bit easier to do. What would typically happen is that I would have to remove the fuel bowl to get access to the fuel jet, but since I have to reconnect the governor linkage to the carb, I'm having to change my normal methods. After getting the fuel tank out of the way, you can see that the linkage is not connected to the carb like it's supposed to. What more than likely happened is that someone was working on the machine, probably doing carb service, and forgot to put the linkage back on, but I can't confirm that just yet. Since I'll have the carb off the engine, I might as well remove the fuel bowl and inspect it. I'll then decide if we need to take out the cartridge for a good cleaning or if we need to just clear the fuel jet. After seeing how clean the bowl area is, I'm just going to make sure the jet is cleared by using a small wire and passing it through the opening in the jet. After clearing it and making sure I can see through it, I'll then reassemble the carb. Now the bowl only fits one way on the carb. If you do put it on the wrong way, you won't be able to install it completely, so be very careful when reinstalling it. I'd also not tighten the screws in one pass, but take turns on tightening one and then the other until they're both tight. Just don't over tighten them, otherwise you'll damage the plastic. Now at this point we're ready to install the carb and also try not to do what the previous owner did and remember to reconnect the governor linkage. To make filming a little bit easier, I'm going to disconnect the fuel line from the tank, that way the tank will be out of the way. Now you don't need to remove the fuel tank if you don't want to, this is for the sake of filming, although it is your mower and your project, so do it however you feel like. Now it's at this point that I started to realize something. When I tried to stab the carb back onto the intake pipe, I noticed that the o-ring and its retainer was still on the pipe. Now this does happen sometimes and you'll need to take it off the pipe and put them back onto the back side of the carb. 
So I went about taking off the o-ring and the retainer from the pipe thinking I'm glad I noticed it only to find out that this wasn't from the carb that we were trying to install. Now the carb already had its retainer and o-ring on it, so where did this set come from then? The answer is more than likely the original carb and this one must be a different carb. Now having another o-ring and retainer on the intake pipe isn't going to hurt the installation, but it's not supposed to be there. Either way, I think that pretty much confirms what happened to this mower. More than likely, someone replaced the carb on this mower and after taking off the old carb, didn't realize that the old carb had left its retainer and o-ring on the intake pipe. Unfortunately, not only did they not realize that they were still there, they also forgot to reconnect the governor linkage, and if that happens, there's a good chance the throttle plate will be closed and no air or fuel will make it to the engine. Now, this is probably what happened to the person who was working on it, and since the gasoline looks to be a few months old, I'm guessing that this might have happened near the end of the last season, and they never got around to looking at it again. So once the opportunity came up to dump it, that's what they did. Now this is only a theory and it makes perfect sense to me, but the only way to find out would be to ask them, but since that's not going to happen, I'm hoping that once this mower is back on the ground, we'll be able to start it up and get it running again. Don't forget when installing foam filters to oil them, that's because the foam will keep the larger debris from getting through, but to make sure smaller debris won't make it through like dust, you have to oil them. Now the next part is something that I wouldn't normally do, but because this mower is several years old, there's a good chance that the valve lash might be out of tolerance. For those of you who don't know, the valve lash is the clearance between the rocker arm and the valve cap. This clearance is supposed to be within a specific range, and if it's out of range, it could either affect how the engine starts or runs. Now instead of putting the engine on top dead center to try and check both clearances at once, I'm going to cheat and do them one at a time. To do that, I'm going to turn the engine so that one of the rocker arms is completely all the way down. That way it can check the one that's not under pressure. I'm going to use my 5 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge and slide it into the clearance between the rocker arm and the valve cap and see how it fits. And on the lower rocker arm, the clearance is much too tight and the feeler gauge won't even slide into the clearance. That means we'll need to adjust this one. Next, I'll rotate the engine so that the other rocker arm will be all the way down and check the clearance on the one that was down. This one, however, looks to be the opposite from the first one. As you can see, it slides right in, but it's much too loose, and that means we'll need to adjust this one as well. To make the adjustments, we'll need to hold on to the nut and then loosen the set screws in the middle of the nuts. Once both are loose, we'll then insert the feeler gauge and then turn the nut until the feeler gauge has a small amount of resistance while sliding in the clearance. All you need to do is keep the feeler gauge moving while turning the nut until you get the desired resistance with the feeler gauge. Once you're satisfied, simply hold the nut still and then tighten the set screw in the middle. After that, repeat the process on the other rocker arm. Now this job doesn't typically have to be done all that often. In fact, most manuals never give a time interval to inspect it, only to inspect it when needed. But it's probably a good idea to check it after two or three seasons of use. This one has seen several seasons, so it was due. Once that's done, we'll start to button everything back up and get ready to see if our theory about what happened to this mower was correct. Hopefully it starts and runs, and if it doesn't, then we'll have our work cut out for us. Oh, there's one more extra thing I want to do, and this will be a great start to a new process. I don't know if you've seen my other videos where I lubricate the wheels, but some have asked me how effective it is. Well, this time, I'm going to show you. I'm also going to pour that old gasoline that came out of the tank back into the tank, just to show you that it was still usable, and I don't have to use it as a cleaner then. This would also be a great time to pour in an additive to keep that fuel from going bad after a few months of sitting idle. For spring and summer, it may not be an issue, but near the end of the season, it'd be a great time to use some. Now for this one, these wheels spin pretty easy to begin with, so for the easy ones, I'm just going to spray some lube on the front and rear part of the wheel around the axle. But what happens when you find one that's not so easy to spin? Now for this wheel in the back of the mower, I tried to spray lube around it, but after giving it a spin, it didn't seem to be all that effective. That means for this one, I'm going to have to remove the nut and the wheel and then clean the axle and then apply a generous amount of lithium grease instead. Now if it's really bad, I'll have to clean any dirt and rust off the axle and then use a scotch Brite pad on it before applying the lube. If this doesn't work, things are going to get pretty difficult, but most times it never gets that bad. Now after going through the cleaning process, I'm very confident that it's going to spin much better than it did before we cleaned and lubricated it. Now your wheel might have a steel sleeve in it, and if that's the case, you might have to clean that as well. 
As you can see, it's spinning a whole lot better now, so it's definitely worth all the extra work. Now, once that's done, I think it's time to show you what I have planned. Now, this is a push-pull meter, and the last time you saw it, I was using it to measure the pulling power of different types of self-propelled systems. For this one, I'm going to use it to slowly pull the mower a short distance on the concrete and find out how much force it takes to get it to start moving. I know I could have done this test a little bit differently, but this way is much more convenient. As you can see, the display says it took 1.67 kilograms to get it to start to move. Now, just to make sure the reading is consistent, I'm going to do that test one more time and see if we can get a better reading. Now this time I was able to get a reading of 1.65 kilograms, which is not much different from the first reading. Now I should have taken a reading before we lubricated the wheels, but to be honest, since this mower is not self-propelled, I don't think it would have made that much of an impact. So the engine started on the first pull, which is always a good selling point, and it seems to run just fine, although I need to test it for a longer period before I decide to sell it, but overall I'm very happy with how this mower turned out. Now as for the pull reading we just got, I want to put that into perspective. This mower is extremely easy to push. 1.6 kilograms is not all that much force, and to be honest, even before we lubricated the wheels and we found that sticky wheel, I still would have classified it as easy to push. Now, if we had taken a reading before it lubricated the wheels, I would have guessed the reading to be in the low 2 kilogram area, but to me, that's still very acceptable. But wait till you see what some of the readings are like for the mowers that have issues with their wheels. Only then will it put our reading into perspective, but you have to wait for a different video to see that happen. So it looks like we were lucky enough to save yet another mower from the recyclers, but I do feel bad for the person who tried to work on this mower and just barely missed out on getting it running again. Now, I'm not sure how they could have missed the governor linkage just laying there on the mowing deck. When I first saw the mower, I saw the linkage immediately, so I didn't even bother to try to start it until I was able to put it back on. But then again, you don't know what kind of conditions they might have been working in when it happened. So my question is, have you ever put a mower, blower, or trimmer back together again and forgot to replace something like a fuel line, throttle linkage, or even the spark plug wire? It's happened to me a few times, but luckily, it was never this bad. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.